let's talk a bit about Euler's number. So in the past, the example we've used to come up with Euler's number was an investment question, right? We said the future value of an investment is equal to the present value times 1 plus i over n times t to the n. This is the formula we usually use, right, where n is the compounding period, i is the interest rate, um, pv, that's your present value, fv is your future value, and t is your time, right? Well, with all this information, we can come up with a scenario, right? Um, we can say that you have an investment where your investment is going to double every year, or in other words, you gain 100% interest. That would mean that your I is just the number one, right? And we can say that you're compounding once a year, right? And just for one year. So if you were gonna make that scenario happen here, and uh, what you're investing doesn't matter, like the actual amount, because when you divide by PV on both sides, you know, that's going to cancel. Um, so let's just say you have 1 plus 100% over 1 to the exponent of 1 times 1, right? One year, one compounding period. What do you get? Well, you get 1 plus 1 is 2 to the 1 is 2. So your future value is going to be double the present value, right? If you divide both sides by PV, you get FV over PV. This is your future value over your present value. It's equal to 2. So you're doubling your money if you do it this way. That's the idea. Um, but what if you increase the compounding periods, right? Like what if you decide to compound this twice a year? You would have 1 plus 1 over 2 times 1 times 2, right? Well, 1 plus a half, you know, you have 1 and a half. 1 and a half squared is going to be 2.25. So now your investment has gone up 2 and a quarter times, right? 2.25 times. Well, that's better than 2. So let's continue increasing this compounding period and we'll see what happens. What if I do 10? What if I do one plus a tenth? So 10 times a year, this is being compounded. So one times 10. So in the bracket here, I have 1.1, that's what this is, to the exponent of 10. And that's gonna be 2.594, again, approximately. So again, it's gone up, right? So this is more and more profitable the more frequently we compound this. So let's compound it some more. Let's say I want to compound it uh, 50 times. 1 plus 1 over 50 to the exponent of 1 times 50. If you do that, that's going to equal 2.692. Okay, still getting bigger. So let's do it again. Let's do 100. Okay, so if we do it 100 times, what do we get? Well, we're going to get 2.705. So still increased. Um, but this increase was a little bit smaller, right? Like, that's not a huge jump. Um, let's do it again. We'll see what happens. This time, though, let's go to 1,000, we'll say. 1 plus 1 over 1,000 to the exponent 1 times 1,000. And if you do this, you're going to get 2.7169. So it still went up. But considering we went up from 100 compounding periods to 1,000, that's a big jump. We barely saw much of an increase, right? Like, maybe like one penny worth right? One penny on the dollar. So with that in mind, let's jump one more time and let's go to a million. So a huge jump now, right? A thousand times we're jumping, right? Because we went from a thousand to a million. So a thousand times the compounding periods. If you calculate this, you get 2.71828. Well, wait a second. We just increased our compounding period amount immensely, right? A thousand times. And this is barely a difference. I don't think you'd notice a difference here at all with your investment, right? So what are we realizing? Well, we're realizing that we're coming to a limit, right? You can't really get past this particular number. And this number is E, right? E is equal to 2.71828182828. And it keeps going, right? It keeps running on. This Euler's number is the limit as to how much benefit you can get from an increased amount of compounding periods, right? And that's why we have that PERT equation, right? The continuously uh, compounded investment equation, um, which we refer to as PERT. It's A equals P E R to the T. And we've covered this in the past, right? That E in there comes from this. It comes from the fact that if you do truly, you know, compound this continuously, you're not going to get much better than this, right? You can't. That's the limit. Another way to express what was happening in that scenario would be to say that E is equal to the limit 
as n goes to infinity. So you haven't really done a lot of work with limits to this point, but this is a limit. Um, basically, 1 plus 1 over n to the exponent n, right? So this is the function we've been working with in these scenarios. n is the number under this one and in the exponent. And the limit just means that that n value is approaching infinity. It means this is getting bigger and bigger, and this is getting bigger and bigger. The question is, what is this whole function approach as those two terms get bigger? Well, they approach e, right? They approach this number. So that's another way to express what's happening here. And the logarithm of with a base of e, right? If you do log base e of x, that's just equal to the natural logarithm of x, right? That's what this represents, okay? So we have that button on our calculator, and you might see um, a button right above it, or if you hit shift or second, that's next to that, um, which looks something like, like this. So you have a button on your calculator that shows e to some exponent, and that allows you to raise e to an exponent, and then this button is either the same button or right next to it, or something like that, depending on your calculator's configuration. In the same way, when you have log base 10 of x, that button on your calculator, you'll have a button with it, um, either on the same button or next to it, which looks like this. It says 10 to the exponent of something, right? Because these are opposites of each other, as we've shown. It's just an alternate way of writing the exponential, okay? So if I were to give you a question like uh, ln of x is equal to n, and you had to rewrite this as an exponent, you would say e to the n is equal to x, because this is just a log with a base of e, okay? Hopefully you're getting comfortable with this idea. Um, and I will mention that E itself is pretty interesting because it appears in math and science all over the place. So it might not be appropriate at this time to show, you know, every occurrence of E showing up, but you will be seeing it in the future, whether it's in calculus or, you know, any number of subjects.